Well, my clock tells me that we are right at our start time, so I want to go ahead and dive in for those of us that are on the call. Well, I'm Chris Lanus. I'm with Versant Funding, uh, and I'm, what I'm going to do today is tell you more about factoring, particularly our non-recourse factoring program. Uh, I think you'll find that it's a great alternative to businesses that just don't qualify for what's available out in today's market. Um, just a little bit of housekeeping, I've got everybody on mute. Um, so we won't be able to, to hear anything you say, but you can submit a question at any point during the teleconference by using the features within GoToWebinar. Uh, on your right-hand side of your screen, you should see a toolbar where you can either chat and submit a question to me using the chat feature or questions. Both of those will come to me, and then at the end of the webinar, I'll, I'll address those questions. The plan for the call is to have about a half hour of content, leave lots of time for discussion at the end. So with that, I'm going to just dive right in. If you're on this call, the chances are good that it's because you have clients that just don't qualify for what's available through traditional sources out there in the financing markets. Factoring can be a great source, an alternative source of financing when a business doesn't qualify for what's available conventionally. Uh, all of our clients at Verson have been turned down by banks and in many cases turned down by other factoring companies. And I'm hopeful that you'll leave this call with a, a better understanding not only of what factoring is, but particularly when Verson might be able to, to help you. My objectives for this webinar is, for one, to give everybody on this call a basic understanding of what factoring is, help familiarize you with the relevant terminology, give you an explanation of our products, sort of step-by-step -step how things work, give you a feel for the competitive landscape, what other factors are doing, and when you might choose one factor over another for your client. I'm going to try to anticipate some of your questions and, and answer some of them before, and I'm going to give you some examples of deals that we've, we've done recently that might help to illustrate when we could be a fit for you. And then, of course, lots of time for any questions that you have. What is factoring? Well, in its simplest terms, factoring is the sale of a company's accounts receivable in order to obtain working capital. There's lots of types of factoring out there. What Versant offers is what's called a non-recourse full notification program. And in summary, what that means is that the account debtors, the customers of your client, are notified to pay Versant directly, and we also take on all the credit risk of non-payment of those customers. And we're going to talk a little bit more about what that means as we go into the presentation. Personally, I come from the lending world. Most of my career was making SBA loans to businesses. So that's the terminology I'm most familiar with. And I expect many of the people on this call also are from the loan world. So I'd like to try to translate terminology that would be used for a loan compared to that which would be used for a factoring program. So to start loan, we don't use the word loan. We use the term factoring facility. We don't talk about loan amounts. We talk about factoring volume or the quantity of invoices factored. There's no lender. Uh, in the case of working with Versin, we are the factor or the purchaser of the receivables. There's no borrower. We have a client or the seller of those receivables. In lieu of a note or loan agreement, we have a purchase and sale agreement. Because again, that's what's happening here. We're not lending money. We're buying assets, buying receivables. There's no interest rate. We have a discount or fee charged against the invoices. And we'll soon talk about what that means. And Instead of a borrower or an obligor, we have the account debtors, which are the client's customers, which are the entities that Versant is really interested in. And really, we're not really concerned about the creditworthiness of your client. We're interested in the creditworthiness of their customers. Who is prospective client for factoring? Well, particularly at Versant, we're looking for small to medium-sized companies, revenues anywhere from a million all the way up to a hundred million. What all of our clients have in common is a liquidity need. They need cash. Uh, they can't wait the 30, 60, 90 days it's going to take to get paid. And typically, our clients aren't bankable. Uh, they don't qualify for what banks have to offer. Uh, and in many cases, they don't qualify for what other factoring companies have to offer. But in general, our clients are new. They're growing too rapidly to attract traditional financing. They may be seasonal, and those ups and downs of revenue can be um, somewhat intimidating to traditional lenders. Uh, or they have experienced losses. We're, we talk to clients every day that after a couple of bad quarters, banks don't want to renew their line or they've now violated a covenant and the bank has, has frozen their facility. That, those are all common traits 
of our clients. In summary, they're unbankable. Our clients' customers are typically very strong. Uh, that's what's important to diversion as a non-recourse factor. As I mentioned at the beginning of the call, our analysis is on who our clients are selling to because we're buying that receivable. We're buying the indebtedness of their customers to our client. So it's important to us that our clients' customers be strong. So they're typically large corporations, municipalities, uh, the U.S. government or other government agencies. Don't want you to leave with the impression that it has to be a household name for it to be a factorable customer, but it needs to be a strong enough business that they can afford to pay their bills. Versant is sort of a generalist in the factoring industry. We'll consider most industries with the exception of medical or construction, but just about anything else is fair game. How can Versant help? Well, our program is really all about providing immediate liquidity to your clients. And we can move quickly. Uh, and I've seen it happen time and again at Versant that we can go from an introduction to a client to funding five days later. As lots of people on this call probably know, that of course means that what the customer tells us is true uh, and there are no, no surprises along the way. But if a customer tells us the story at the beginning, it turns out to be true, we can generally meet their, their expectations in terms of a, a funding time. And we have a wide range. We've got clients uh, with as little as a million in revenue and as much as a hundred million in revenue. What they all have in common, good customers and they can't get enough financing through traditional sources. As I mentioned earlier, because we are non-recourse, we do not really concern ourselves with the financial condition of our clients. Um, we're not going to ask about their performance. I'm not going to ask to see their tax returns. We're not going to audit them. I'm really going to be focused on the receivables, who they're due from, and what is their quality. This next slide is to give you an idea of some of the different ways that factoring proceeds can be used. By no means is this meant to be all-encompassing uh, and just trying to get you to think about the types of solutions we could provide. We have clients use factoring to help fund a, a project to fuel their, their growth. Uh, maybe there's an opportunity to buy a large quantity of, of inventory at a discount from a supplier. Uh, maybe there's just a crisis they're, they're dealing with, and we've seen that as well, where business is just going through a real trouble uh, because of a defective product that resulted in a large number of returns, uh, an accident uh, that resulted in a, the injury of, of a consumer that they're now working through. So helping them get through that crisis until they're bankable again. It's sort of what all these come down to is we're not going to monitor, we're not going to track how our clients use the factoring proceeds, but it can meet any of these, these bridge needs. And that's really what it's about. We're providing a bridge to companies until they qualify for more traditional financing. In terms of how the funding process works, what I'm trying to illustrate is it starts with an invoice. A client pre presents an invoice to Versant for funding. We're typically verifying by contacting the customer, confirming what the invoice tells us is true, and then immediately wiring 75% of the face value of that invoice to our customer. It gives them very quick access to cash. When their customer makes payment, they're now making that payment to Versant. When we receive payment, well now we forward our client that remaining 25%. We call it the rebate. It's the 25% the we did in advance initially when we, we funded on that invoice. Less our fee. And our fee typically accrues at a rate of 2.5% for every month that invoice is outstanding. So when we get paid, that's when we know what the fee will be, and we take that fee out of the invoice. So unlike a loan, our clients are not making any kind of fixed payment to us. They're advancing us invoices, or they're forwarding us invoices. We're advancing 75% against them. Their customers are paying us, and then our clients get the balance less the fee. And it becomes a very much a, an ongoing flow of cash. And that's what this next slide illustrates, is that it really is a cycle in that clients are always giving us new invoices, some as frequently as daily, others maybe weekly or monthly. A business that is more erratic in their sales might just submit the occasional, maybe a quarterly invoice. But we will factor them as often as the client needs. And then as we're paid, every week we advance rebates, those 25% that we hadn't previously advanced, taking out our fee. So for our average client, they're getting pay funds from us often several times a week when they issue us new invoices and when we give them the rebates for invoices that paid in that previous week. 
Next, I'd like to give you a feel for what's out there, what type of factoring companies are out there. And there are a wide range that meet different needs and meet the or can fulfill uh, the needs of different profile of clients. Sort of two main categories. Category one, and there are lots of these smaller factors. They don't they typically don't have access to a lot of capital. So they're usually doing smaller deals. So a, a business with a, a half a million dollars or less in annual revenue, these can be a, a great choice for them because these factors are willing to take on lots of small customers to diversify their risk and they can meet that that group very well. Then there's another category well, category two here of larger, more established factoring companies. And these are some of the names that, that many of you uh, may be familiar with on this call. Th that group of factors, they tend to be looking at a quality of client that maybe is just a small notch below what banks will do. They will often consider some very large transactions, but they're typically also underwriting the client, underwriting the business. So businesses with losses, businesses that have had some crisis, usually don't meet the needs of uh, or they'll, they'll meet the criteria of this category of lender. Versant's niche is really, for the most part, deals that, that can't get done elsewhere. We're typically doing larger deals than those smaller factors, those Category 1 factors would do, and we're typically doing tougher deals than the Category 2 factors would do. Uh, it's very common that a client is coming to us after they've not only been declined by their bank, but by a factoring company as well. And first, we've got a, a, a great profile in that we're able to have the, the access to capital that a larger factor would have, but also provide the very personalized service that a smaller factor would have. Would have. We assign each of our clients an account executive, so they have a, an individual to contact when they've got needs that, can, that aren't met by their standard terms. For example, it's not uncommon for us to do an over-advance for a well-established client of ours that needs a little extra cash, or to do a credit review of a new customer that our client is taking on. And we, in addition to the personalized service, we use technology to provide our, access, provide our clients access to data. And we find this is often a reason why our clients' receivables perform better with us than they did when they were handling them on their own, is we give them information, access to a database or a spreadsheet online that shows the status of all of their receivables at any point in time. So you can really get a good handle on what's out there, what's paying, what's not, and also an expectation of, of cash flow for the, the coming week. Next, I'd like to, to touch on some questions I think some of you may, may have in your heads right now. What are versus basis requirements for factoring? Well, the, our client is selling something, whether it be a product or a service, to good, creditworthy companies. And then we can verify that those invoices that are submitted to us are accurate. Does Versa offer factoring in all U.S. states? Yes, we do. Uh, we've got clients all over the country. While we are based in New Jersey, uh, I am actually talking to you out of my, my Connecticut home office today, and we do have clients that are on each coast and, and everywhere in between. Does Versant require certified financial statements in the application process? No, uh, we don't require any financial statements. Uh, I'd be happy to send anybody interested uh, after this call a list of information that we do need to see in order to assess a client for factoring. And you'll notice we don't ask for tax returns, financials, personal financial, personal credit reports. What I ask about are the receivables, and that's where our focus is. Does a company have to be profitable to qualify for factoring? And no, they don't. Uh, we have lots of clients that are just too new. They haven't gotten to profitability yet. Uh, we've got others that have, have had a tough few quarters, uh, as many have in this economy. And that all that can be fine. Uh, what we hope to see that our clients uh, have a way to get profitable and that we like to think that by factoring with us, they'll be able to do incremental volume, incremental revenue, be able to become more efficient, more effective, and become more profitable. But if their track record is not one of profitability, that in no way disqualifies them for financing with Versant. How long does the closing process take? Well, typically, we can, we can really do this in a week. Uh, if we've got a motivated client who quickly responds to our request for information, it's not uncommon to go from an introduction to funding five days later. What industries will Versa purchase accounts receivable from? Almost any industry is eligible for factoring. We stay away from medical and construction. Those are sort of two specialized niches, and there are companies out there that do nothing but that. And if anybody on this call is interested, I'd be happy to refer you to one of them. But we are just focused on companies that sell something to other good quality companies. 
is there a minimum volume for receivables that, that a company needs to commit to factor? Well, for at Versa, we want to see a client that can do at least $100,000 per month. We've gone a little lower than that in cases where we think a business has the opportunity to grow, uh, but not much lower. If a client needs less than 50000 we would probably refer them to one of those Category 1 factors that I described earlier on. Does Versa require personal guarantees? No, we do not. I mentioned at the start of this call, we have our non-recourse factor. And I can tell you this is a common reason why Versant will win a deal uh, over other funding sources is the principals, maybe they cannot, or maybe they just, they just do not want to tie up their personal assets by guaranteeing the facility. What we do require is what we call a performance guarantee. When we buy invoices from our clients, we want someone at our client's business to stand behind the work performed or the goods provided. For example, if we factor invoices to a, that are, were shipped to a company and that company goes out of business, well, that's our loss. If that company opens up the boxes and they realize, hey, this isn't what we ordered or these are all defective, that remains our client's responsibility. And that's what a performance guarantee is all about. Who qualifies for factoring? Well, a wide range of companies qualify for factoring. They may have a negative net worth. They could be losing money. We've had clients that are currently in Chapter 11, and we're providing debtor in possession financing. But really what they all have in common is our clients have good quality receivables, and they don't qualify for what banks have to offer. And very frequently, they don't qualify for what other factoring companies have to offer either. Can a company with little or no credit history qualify for factoring? And yes, we have had clients where we factored the first invoice they ever issued, so they had no track record, but they were making those sales to good quality companies. That's what's important to us. Do a company's customers always know when a company is seeking financing through factoring? And yes, I described our offering as a full notification program. And what that means is our clients will send to their customers a notification. And the notification will tell them we've entered into a fundering arrangement with Versin to help fuel our growth. Uh, until further notice, send your payments to Versin Funding. Uh, and that's because we are not lending. We're not underwriting our clients. All we have to protect us is the, the flow of cash flowing through us. And so that is important. Will a company seeking factoring be viewed negatively by its customers? And I can tell you this is a, a very common concern our clients have when they approach us. And, and I understand it. It's important for our clients to worry what their customers will think. But factoring just isn't the red flag that they expect. Factoring is a much more common type of financing than many people understand. And particularly when a client of ours is selling to one of the big guys, if they're selling to Walmart, to Target, uh, to other large companies like that, those companies are paying factors like crazy right now. They've got thousands of suppliers that they are paying through factors. So to their customers, this is a non-event. A company like Walmart, they're flipping a switch in an accounts payable system, and now the checks are, are cut and sent to a new location. So this just isn't the red flag our clients believe it to be. We happily provide our clients references so they can talk to our customer, customers who've had that same concern. And we'll just eventually we're able to see that it's just not the problem they expect it will be. This next slide, I try to illustrate one of the benefits of factoring and the impact that factoring can have on profits. This all goes back to the premise that factoring will allow a business to do more revenue than it's doing today. If that's not the case, it might not make sense to factor. But if this will allow incremental revenue, or allow a company to sort of keep their head above water until they can get cheaper financing, that's when factoring can make sense. So in this example, it assumes that revenues go from 100000 before factoring to 200 after. Cost of goods sold remain constant at 65%. Profit margin also remains the same at 35%. And variable costs will go up uh, going from uh, 10000 to 20000 but the percentage thing constant at 10. Fixed costs remaining fixed. Now, we, the cost of factoring will be taken into account in the after factoring scenario, but because revenue was able to double, the net profit was originally 5,000 or 5% of revenue, and in the new example, it jumps to 20,000 or 10% of revenue, all because incremental business was able to be done through factoring, and that's what's key. If our client's profit margins are good, factoring might reduce those profit margins slightly by the cost of factoring, but if the revenue is able to go up, it can bring more profits to the bottom line, and that's what we hope to do. Next, a few examples. I think they're a great way to, to get people to think about when factoring could be a choice for their customers. 
This, one, this first one is a consumer electronics manufacturer. And I'll, I'll let you know right off the bat, that can often be a, a tough industry to get financing for. Uh, a lot of traditional lenders, one, they fear what they don't know. So if they don't understand very well exactly what their customer produces or what they sell, that could be a big turnoff right from the start. But this company, they had been well established. They were a seller of tablets, e-readers, MP3 players, other electronics. They had some great customers. You can see here Target, Walmart, Amazon. But they, they had a, you know, I talked about crisis management for. They had a crisis. They had a big shipment of a product go out that turned out to be defective. So return rates were high. That caused them to default on their bank covenants. And the bank froze the line uh, and required pay down. Their customers, while strong, pay kind of slowly. You know, they can expect to wait 75 days in most cases to get paid. And they just can't afford to, to be hanging out there all that time. So we stepped in very quickly. Uh, and I can tell you, this company came to us pretty deep into the crisis. They had shopped this everywhere, looking for financing from other banks, from other factors, and just could not find what they need. But we stepped in very quickly, and we'll provide them the financing they need to, to bridge them. And this is a company that got strong customers, strong management, well, uh, well, strong demand for their products, so they'll probably outgrow us in about a year. But it's a great example of us helping a business through a crisis. This next one I think is also an interesting example. This is a commercial printer. You know, it's sort of an, you know, an old line business. Uh, had also been in operation for a long time. The situation with our client was that they had recently purchased it. Uh, the seller financed the purchase, and that relationship with the seller had soured. Uh, seller was sort of getting their nose in with some of their key suppliers, with some of their key customers, and our client, the buyer, wanted out from under that seller loan as soon as possible, but just couldn't qualify for bank financing. So what the business did was they leveraged all their equipment, they did a sale lease back to, to pay off the, the seller best they could, but then they, we stepped in, we factored some of their receivables to get the seller the remaining cash to get them out of their business. Well, and now we're also factoring all of their receivables to provide the additional operating capital they need, uh, and again, this is another business that's growing, that's, that's building their, their customer base, and will probably also outgrow us probably in the 18, 24 month time frame. This last example, uh, this is actually sort of high tech in, in that it's a security software. Uh, this company uses uh, secure, uh, software on mobile devices to help keep the data on iPads and other tablet computers secure. And the issue of this company was that they had been working very hard to make a merger happen. They, they were in talks with a complementary form of technology and worked so hard through all of 2011 to make that merger happen. Um, while that was going on, they neglected some of their key customers. They took their eye off the ball of their financials, so revenues were down. And they just were no longer bankable. And unfortunately, the merger didn't happen after all that work. So... This is another case where traditional funding sources don't love the industry because software, they're not, they don't fully understand what does this do, what's the revenue stream, uh, and even other factors had shied away from it, and this deal was referred to us by another factor, but we're going to, uh, and are currently providing them the working capital they need to bridge them through this time, help them rebuild their financials uh, with the goal of um, paying us off probably in the next 18 months or so. So that's the... The meat of the presentation, uh, at this point I'd love to open it up for anybody who might have any specific questions uh, that I didn't address. Uh, like I said, feel free to enter a question in the chat feature or the questions feature of go to webinar.com and I'll respond with the, with the uh, response. I've got one question here asking about international business. Uh, at Versant, we do not focus on international. Our focus is really on U.S. businesses that are selling to U.S. businesses. We've made rare exceptions to that, but for the most part, we really do want to focus on. Whoops, uh, we really do want to focus on U.S. businesses that are selling to U.S. businesses. Let's see if we have any other questions. Why will Versant not consider 
businesses in the construction or medical industries? Well, to be honest, they're, they're just specialized fields. Uh, working with a, a medical professional and dealing with Medicare, Medicaid, insurance companies uh, is a challenge, and we leave it to those that, that know it best. Uh, similarly with construction, well, you have to deal with things like subcontractors, lien waivers, lien releases, mechanics liens, and again, it can be done, but we'd rather leave it to the specialists. Uh, I've had a question if we do business in Mexico, and I can tell you there have been cases where we've considered business in Mexico. Uh, what I would need to understand is, is the, the client in Mexico or are they selling to companies in Mexico? So, uh, Fernando, I'd love to learn more about that, love to learn more about that, uh, that opportunity. Sorry, oh. sorry, I had a little blip there on my computer. Uh, any other questions? Oh, can you email me a copy of this presentation? Yes, I'd be happy to email a copy of this presentation to anybody who'd like one. Um, just shoot me an email after the presentation. I'd be happy to uh, to send you a copy. We'll just give another minute, see if we have any more questions that I can answer for anyone. What industries are a good fit for factoring? Well, we're less concerned about the industry than we are the quality of the customers. But I can tell you we've done a number of transactions for manufacturers, distributors, wholesalers, staffing. I mentioned software, uh, consultants. Uh, it really runs the gamut, what they all have in common. They don't qualify for what banks have to offer, and they have good, good quality receivables. What is the typical turnaround time? Well, for, I'll talk about two phases of the process and turnaround time. First phase is when I ask you for some information. Uh, give me a copy of the recent aging and a list of the customers. And usually within 24 hours, I can not only tell you what we think, but I can have a written proposal to you. And one of the things I love about working for Versant is we are a very flat organization. So what I'm going to do is if the deal appears viable, I'm going to ask you to arrange a call with your client and the owner of our company so they can very quickly hear from the decision maker and the guy who writes the checks, is this a fit for, for you? It gives them a chance to learn about us. We can learn about them. If all goes well, now we're all on the same page and we can issue a proposal. You're not going to have to wonder, okay, what's credit committee going to say or what's this factor's funding source going to say? You're talking to the credit committee and funding source together all in the person on, personification of our owner. Um, so the decision or turnaround time for a proposal, 24 hours. If your client accepts the proposal, we can be in a position to fund them uh, in as quickly as a week. I've got another question here, and the question is, explain your fee structure again. Do you distribute 25% of the AR to your customer, deduct the 2.5% monthly fee from the 25%, and then remit the net difference? Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it's pretty much been explained properly there. Yes, we advance 75% up front, and then when the client's customer makes payment to us, well, now we, we are able to calculate the fee. Because to get more specific, the way the average fee is calculated, it's 2.5% for the first 30 days, and then it's broken down into 10-day increments thereafter. And the additional 10 days are typically charged at 0.84%. So let's just to keep math a little more simple, let's assume an invoice pays in 60 days. So the client will get 75% up front, and the fee for 60 days is 5%. So there'll be a 5% fee to Versant, 20% factoring, I'm sorry, 20% rebate paid to the client. So in that scenario, with a 60-day payment, the client gets 75% up front, 20% when the customer pays, 5% is the fee to Versant. Do you have any marketing tips for finding these business owners? Well, I can tell you how, how I market. And my focus is on talking to people who work with small businesses. So my network includes business brokers, bankers, leasing companies, business coaches, CPAs, attorneys, turnaround manager, managers, and all my focus is on those people who are likely to be having conversations with their clients about their financing needs, about the challenges they're experiencing. And I think other lenders are a great source because that those are where people go first. First, they go to the bank. They go to traditional sources of funding. It's only when they've said no do they consider 
referring them to alternatives. So that's how I market my business. I don't really do much direct marketing to business owners. I find that can be challenging um, simply because they don't always understand factoring and they don't they, their initial impression is negative. But if they're introduced to factoring through a, tr a trusted advisor of theirs, a lot of those initial objections are, are overcome. The next question was, do you charge the 2.5% monthly fee on basis of proportion to month used? Uh, yes. The, well, let me explain. The, the way the fee is broken down, it is 2.5% for the first 30 days in most cases. So if a client gives us an invoice and it pays in 20 days, well, typically the fee is still 2.5%. But then each additional 10 days, it's broken down into increments. So if an invoice pays in 31 days, it's not as if it's 25 for the first month and then another 25 for the second month. They would just pay the additional 0.84% because the invoice paid in that first 10-day bucket. hope that wasn't too confusing, but John, who asked the question, I'd be happy to explain it in more detail if you've got any further questions. Uh, next question is, what is the minimum AR size? Well, we like to see a business that will factor at least 100000 per month. We've gone smaller than that. Uh, in terms of an individual invoice, we can buy invoices that are, that are quite small, but we might require the client to, fact, to what we call batch them. So maybe a client has individual invoices of, of $500 or $1,000 a pop. Well, that's okay, but we're not going to want to factor a single invoice for $500. We might ask them to save them until you've got $10,000 worth of invoices and then send us all of them. So we, we can do a very small, uh, well, a business that has very small invoices, but we wouldn't factor just a single small invoice. Uh, will you consider any spot factoring? Um, let me first explain what, what is spot factoring. It's, spot is a term that's often used when a factoring company buys just a single invoice. You know, I showed you our chart, our little flow of funds. With spot factoring, there's really no flow. There's an invoice. The factor advances against it. When it's paid, the fee is collected, rebate paid. So, and the answer is yes. First, we'll do that, but we'll do it in cases where it's a large spot invoice. So if you had a client who wanted to factor one invoice for a million dollars or more, absolutely. You know, if they had one invoice for 50000 that's that's not for, for Versant, but I could probably point you to somebody who might be able to help you. But uh, spot factoring can be done in limited cases at Versant, and typically comes down to, is it a big invoice? And, of course, is that big invoice due from a good quality company? Does anybody else have any questions? Well, uh, I'd like to thank everybody for your time today and joining us. Uh, again, I'd be happy to send a copy of this presentation to anybody who's interested. Uh, I also post a recording of the presentation on YouTube, so if you want to hear any of the answers to any of the questions today as well, you can, you can get that also. My contact information is up on the screen here. Uh, feel free to reach out to me any of those ways. These seminars are given about every six weeks or so, um, so if you join late and you'd like to, to be on the next one, or if you know somebody who would have enjoyed this or wasn't able to make it, uh, please do watch out for our next invitation because there'll be another one coming down the pike. Uh, thank you, everybody, and have a great day.